Uh, thanks, Nitya, for inviting me and uh, introducing me as well. Uh, I would say it's a great honor to be a part of uh, today's event. <clears throat> okay. Uh, in my talk, uh, I will try to outline, uh, let's say, the similarities between the two languages, uh, uh, especially used on the social networks um, <clears throat> that I came across in uh, 2015 during the refugee crisis. Uh, uh, so primarily, this is the language of, let's say, anti-Islamism here in Slovenia, in my country. So uh, it happened actually that this language was in every way uh, uh, remarkably similar to the language of anti-Semitism. So I think it will be clear to everyone what I'm talking about just in a minute or uh, uh, two. So um, one thing that I would like to stress is that uh, uh, these two languages some, somehow overlap. This would be uh, one of the major, I would say, conclusions. Uh, so, uh, I mean, when we analyze uh, this concrete, I mean, language on social media, on, uh, on the Facebook, uh, especially uh, on the, uh, I mean, the Slovenian Facebook users, and uh, when we compare it to the language, let's say, of the classical anti-Semitism, I would say, I would claim, uh, I would, uh, uh, name this World War II anti-Semitism, then we will see that uh, there are really many analogies in a way that uh, both languages uh, in a way uh, mention the, the awakened leader, the fear that one that has to, to, to deal with Jews uh, in the same way that it has to do deal with the with, with the Muslims, so to say. So I would say this Islamophobic discourse is uh, uh, fundamentally overlapping with anti-Semitic one. So uh, a refugee today, I would, I would claim, can suddenly occupy the position of a threatening Jew. So if this is true, then there is a kind of relatedness going on of both discourses and um, uh, and so we have a, a kind of form of new racism uh, uh, in the form of Islamophobia that uh, provides some kind of rationalization of a belief system uh, uh, that triggers sympathy for the Holocaust, for genocide, killing, uh, and so on and so forth. So let me show you some examples of uh, such anti-Muslim discourse that can be found on Slovenian, uh, by Slovenian Facebook users in 2015. Uh, all statements that will be cited uh, were made from August 2015 to December 2015. Uh, I have to, to stress, to emphasize that uh, these uh, examples uh, were, were uh, taken from the so-called common uh, users. I mean, these Facebook users are not uh, really, uh, I mean, members of some neo-Nazi groups or right-wingers or uh, some sort of extremists. They're just uh, ordinary people, common people. Uh, and, uh, and that's really, in a way, let's say, um, um stressing to see that so many people uh feel like that so here you have some examples of uh of such uh i would say statements from slovenian facebook users during the refugee crisis uh, uh and here you see some of them for example uh i mean they they all refer to the refugees of course so off to Auschwitz with them, they don't belong anywhere else, or too late for borders, they are here already. Hitler must be brought back from 
did that, he, he would sort this out fast. Or Mauthausen, followed by a group shower, or Dachau, Auschwitz, etc., still in condition for repopulation. Folks, I know it's ugly to hear it from me, but if we want what's best for our kids, European countries will have to absolutely really uh, have to do something to protect our people. I'm not a racist, but this can be happening in, this can't be happening in Europe. A million people, are you nuts? Where to put them? Who to feed them? Should it come to war? I hope the EU wins, even though a lot of people think Europe is, is led by Jews or lock them all up in concentration camps, the trash of a nation have no business in the EU, or Auschwitz being deserted for too many years and the stacks are in need of cleaning, or take them to Auschwitz, the vermin, or uh, gas chambers are uh, still open, or Europe will come to, to miss mind fear Adolf Hitler. Fuck it, this is hate speech. Hitler, where are you? Shoot them all up. Uh, or come on, people, these are poor or refugees. Mercy Adolf, please reincarnate. Or sometimes when you see these real images and the statements by the police, you wish the Hitler woke up and put an iron curtain on our border with Croatia. Or Hitler was a cruel leader, but he put all who disrespected him in their place. He also taught his people to respect their nation and their land. Despite his cruel behavior, he was a respected and successful leader. Or lock all 5,000 or how many there may be in Slovenia in a gas chamber. Put them on trains, on cattle cars, the destination Dachau, or gas chambers are the solution, or here's our Lebensraum, and so on. Where is Hitler when you need him? He will sort it out, or I think the entire Middle East is going to migrate. This means the soon downfall of Europe. Regrettably, we are missing the kind of ruler that the Germans had in 45. Gas chambers the, then run all bloody vermin directly in there or and so on and so forth so you can see really um a pattern um uh, uh, that would uh, sound like uh, really uh anti-semitic one i would say so i mean here's just some illustrations of this anti-muslim statements by Slovenian and Facebook users, users at the outbreak of the ref refugee crisis in 2015. Uh, uh, and I would say that uh, we can uh, find some characteristics of this language. Uh, I mean, all uh, based on some sort of xenophobia, of course. And one of these characteristics would be that Hitler is depicted as a savior. So we have a large part of the statements directly, that directly calls for Adolf Hitler to be reawakened. So what is typical is that Hitler is imagined as if in the form of hibernation or as somebody who needs to wake up himself or somebody who needs to be resuscitated since we all miss or need him to intervene against the refugees. Then we have a kind of idolatry of the Third Reich. So many, many users uh, paint with great sympathy an image of Hitler's historical success, while some of them recognize uh, the, the spirit of the Nazi leader that uh, is already present uh, uh, and that he is horizon and will wash away the migrants. So, uh, uh, so all these ideas are, I mean, associated with the icon of the leader of the Third Reich. Uh, 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 and uh, sometimes even Hitler is uh, intimately addressed as Adolf or even Dolphy. Then we have uh, uh, concentration camps as a solution that are suggested. So ma many refer references are uh, found to Nazi concentration camps uh, offered as a solution. Uh, the refugee crisis will be solved and uh, we need a kind of the annulment of the refugees. So, uh, uh, frequently termed as trash or vermin. Um, 
Then we have uh, many mentions of uh, concentration camps that are well known in Slovenian historical memory, like Auschwitz, Dachau, or Mauthausen. Uh, so the refugees ought to be deported and locked up in concentration camps is asserted by a particularly high number of users. Then we have these mentions of gas chambers. So. Uh, concentration camps are somehow connected with gas chambers in the sense that uh, gas is the suggested method of execution uh, by many users uh, who sometimes refer uh, also to chimney stacks which need to be cleaned or suggesting that the refugees migration route is now going to lead through the stacks. Then we have many mentions of shooting of course uh, proposed killing uh, or using red poison. So generally most often the vocation of Hitler as the image of the saver is accompanied by reference to these concentration camps uh, or gas chambers and uh, in, in the combination with the anticipation of his arrival and, uh, and so on. Okay, so this is Maybe uh, only a small sample, uh, I could find uh, hundreds of them, of uh, Facebook, Facebook users in Slovenia during, let's say, the peak of the refugee crisis uh, in 2015. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, luckily we don't have uh, <laughs> such evidence of concrete anti-Semitism here in Slovenia. So. I wanted to compare uh, such uh, anti-Islamist uh, hate speech with the uh, anti-Semitic uh, hate speech, of course. And the only the only way to do was uh, uh, to do this was to compare it with anti-Semitism abroad, so to say. So um, uh, I decided to compare it with the with the. Um, with the hate crime, uh, uh, with the, with the, uh, with with some evidence or some service on anti-Semitism in the EU, EU. So uh, what I did is to uh, to have a look at the service of the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights. Uh, here are two services that uh, I compared. Uh, that uh, I mean that are I mean. Uh, enough representative for the speak about anti-Semitism in, in the public sphere in the EU. Uh, as we can imagine, this survey suggests that, uh, that uh, anti-Semitism is a worsening problem uh, in the EU states, uh, that many, many respondents uh, um, believe that anti-Semitism is increasing in their country, that uh, that's a very serious problem, of course, that uh, that's most problematic on the internet, on social media, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so key finding in this FRA uh, study would be that uh, there is a large majority of respondents who are uh, who consider anti-Semitism and racism to be the most pressing problem in the EU member states, then there is a large majority of respondents who believe that anti-Semitism has increased over the past five years, uh, that uh, they express concern about increasing intolerance towards Muslims, uh, that they consider anti-Semitism uh, online as a problem in the country they live in, that they believe that anti-Semitism online has increased over the past five years and so on and uh, so forth. Uh, here is a short uh, survey of uh, anti-Semitic incidents in the EU members, I mean, in the, in the, in, in the EU, EU member states. Uh, you can see, for, for example, that in Slovenia, there are basically none uh, from 2009 to 2019, uh, but there, there are, I mean, the most problematic countries would be, for example, uh, Germany, then uh, United Kingdom, then maybe Netherlands, then France, of course, um, uh, and, um, and 
And that was basically uh, my idea how to uh, compare, I mean, uh, two languages. Uh, I mean, it, it was so obvious that this anti-Semitic language found uh, on the social media in Slovenia, and I guess not only here in Slovenia, is so similar to the to the to the uh, anti sorry anti Islamist language is so similar to the anti Semitic uh, language that can be found uh, I mean uh, everywhere that I decided to compare it with the situation in Germany and uh, in the UK. So what I did is to to uh, to. Uh, to compare this with uh, some findings, uh, findings uh, made by uh, Schwarz, Friesel and Reichardt in 2017, published in their book Inside the Anti-Semitic Mind. And uh, obviously we can find, I mean, uh, anti-Jewish statements uh, in social media in Germany that uh, are as follows, for example, you ugly little Jews, mankind, rats, one should guess all genetically declared Jewish criminals or the Jews are to be blamed for everything, therefore we should eliminate the Jews uh, in whatever way we can, or it's time for proper Aryans to turn on the gas. I'm going to give you a grand guessing in Auschwitz. It's getting to be time again for proper areas to turn on the gas uh, and so on. Uh, then we have, then I compared this uh, anti-Islamist uh, speech in Slovenia with the uh, uh, anti-Semitic incidents, uh, incident report in, in the UK. This is only a small sample of anti-Semitic comments made by uh, or collected by Community Security Trust. Uh, in the UK, this is a charity that protects British Jews from anti-Semitism. So let us uh, see some of the examples of the statements uh, uh, from the UK. For example, burn all Jews, Hitler was the fucking greatest, Hitler was right, I'm going to kill you, you fucking Jew. Your behavior does nothing but to convince millions of people that Hitler was right. They are unfortunately just like they are caricatured money grabbing parasites who are like cancer. Hi Hitler, let's guess all the Jews or Hitler should have killed them. I'm Hitler, I'm gonna guess you. Uh, Jews are scum, die, I will call Hitler, we will call Hitler to shoot you. Hitler did nothing wrong, the Jews are the worst religious group in the world, or Auschwitz Muse Museum is a fraudulent enterprise forced to admit the gas chamber exhibit was a post-war reconstruction, or sent you Jews to Auschwitz as they have been dormant for a while now, we will gas them and send you your corpse for display to deter further Jews from your premises. Where are the gas chambers made? Hitler is coming uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, let me show you some illustrations from this uh, anti-Semitic incidents report in the UK. As you can see, uh, they are, I mean, basically, uh, predominantly, uh, these reports are from social media as well, especially from Twitter, just like you can see here or, uh, or here. So Hitler isn't the only one that can silence 70,000 needs. Uh, imagine how bad the world would be now if 6 million more of them had survived. Uh, so, I mean, that's something that, that we can expect from from anti-Semites, uh, anti-Semites, uh, and of course, uh, some common features of these statements would be like follows: fascination with Hitler, of course. I mean, the above statements we we'll, we find uh, an extraordinary number of views that express the expected fascination with Hitler. Then. Uh, some kind of approvals, it, so many statements that are merely a tribute to Hitler's past action and expression of respect for them, or often merely approval of his past conduct, or we have a relatively small number of anti-Semitic statements expressing the expectation of a new arrival of Hitler. Of course, we have uh, some sort of initiative for killing Jews that prevails, 
Of course, then we have a Holocaust denial. Um, I mean, we, we have several mentions of concentration camps, uh, but are quite rare compared to the mentions in the Slovenian Facebook users, for example. Um, so what would be, let's say, a short and um, uh, a short comparison between this anti-Semitism and Islamophobia language or anti-Islamic, anti-Muslim language, I would say the following that, uh, that we have this comparison between a Jew and a refugee. So this comparison would show that uh, that, uh, that if we have a kind of hatred, intolerance, xenophobia directed towards the figure of the Jew in the same way as it is uh, directed towards a refugee. Uh, so there is a, a solution uh, uh, suggested in the same way. So we have to solve the so-called Jewish question. So, and this will be, I mean, uh, uh, done e by, by shooting, killing concentration camps using gas chambers and so on. And the same solution is also expected in the case of the, ref the so-called refugee issue. Then we have, of course, the evocation of Hitler. So, uh, so the ultimate successful leader who will be able to solve all the problems with the modern Jews is uh, also the one that will be the, the only leader uh, that will do the job uh, in the case of refugees. Then we have a kind, I would even say, interchangeability. So these two languages here are, uh, are um, practically interchangeable. That would mean that we can easily attribute, I mean, the British anti-Semite anti statements to, to, let's say, Slovene users and vice versa. So they are really, really, I mean, the same, they're really using almost the same language, the same language registers. Uh, and there are really small and unimportant differences, I would say. So um, there is an expectation of a new arrival or uh, reincarnation, so to say, of Hitler, uh, that is even less common among British anti-Semites than in Slovenian Islamophobes. Eh? Uh, uh, and the same applies maybe to the idea of using concentration camps. Um, okay, um, is there something new going on? Well, I would say that Slovenian case is nothing special. Uh, it's not particularly prominent. Uh, I would I would believe that we can find almost uh, the same language uh, elsewhere. I mean, uh, anti-Muslim uh, beliefs or feelings or whatever in the public discourse, especially uh, on social media, are more or less, I would say. Um, uh, similar to any other cases. Um, so we have several authors that uh, have uh, found such kinds of similarities between, let's say, anti-Semitism and anti-Islamism. Uh, for example, there are authors like, like uh, Compatiaris and Milonas uh, uh, who uh, who believe that we have a kind of um, um, the same situation in the modern Greece, especially through analyzing the Golden Dawn movement. So we have the immigrants and the Jews. Uh, they are all depicted as impure or threatening the, 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 to corrupt the nation. So, I mean, we can find such similarities or in the analysis also in uh, in Greece, for example, or we have Aliette and Padovan who are talking about the distribution of anti-Semitic and Islamophobic attitudes uh, that are overlapping uh, also in uh, uh, Italian uh, situation with uh, some extremist groups. Uh, 
uh, and they believe that uh, that racism is in a way multi-targeted and that uh, that there is not so much options between anti-semitism and islamophobia so what are the reasons what are the causes for such uh, race of uh, um, anti-islamism i i believe that uh, there is a huge influence of political parties of course uh, we've got many many far-right political parties in europe in the last decades uh, these are so-called one-issue parties, so they are mostly directed uh, against Islam or Muslims. I would say that this is true for the Dutch party of Gerd Wilders, for example, then Austrian Freedom Party or Hungarian Jobbik, also Fidesz, German AFD, uh, they all have, I would say, some tradition and they are all rooting um, in a way in uh, in national socialism um well we have these extreme parties right-wing parties also in greece as mentioned before the golden dawn and then also yabik uh, uh, i would even say that these are extreme right neo-nazi parties and of course in slovenia we have uh, sds uh, the social democrats of slovenia which is now the ruling party here and who was spreading this hatred toward Muslims during the refugee crisis and is well known for its anti-Islamism as well. So what would be my short conclusion? So I would say that we have similar motives of hatred in both cases. I mean, in the case of anti-Semitism and, and uh, anti-Islamism as well. So um, there is a kind of uh, hatred and fear uh, going on, I mean, on different levels, uh, with different motives, cultural, religious, economic, and so on. Um, I would say that they use almost the same language, language as you, you could see before. So uh, there are some discursive features and metaphors in the language that are remarkably similar in both cases. Uh, uh, I would say that the demonstration of expressions of hatred, racism, xenophobia, intolerance is somehow very, very uh, similar or even the same. They both approve of Hitler. Uh, they both uh, believe in a way in a uh, in the, the success in the success of third reich they're both fascinated by 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 hitler they they in a way uh uh le legitimate justifies the horrific acts of the holocaust of the genocide uh, and so on and uh uh i would even say that such uh, uh language of anti-islamism or uh uh, is uh, is um, is trying to normalize is trying to consolidate uh, basically anti-semitism so uh, it provides some kind of rationalization of belief system that triggers sympathy for the holocaust for genocide and killing uh, and is of course based on anti-islamist prejudices against mi migrants and refugees so there are some broader problems i would say that uh, i couldn't address today but are interesting enough for me uh, there are some conceptual problems with defining fascism today so uh, what fascism is and what fascism is not uh, i would be very much interested in epistemological side of fascism so can we say that fascism is only uh, an ideology or can we define fascism also on the level of beliefs about fascist ideas? Is there such thing as an um, epistemological definition of fascism? So why, why, is this, why, why is this important? I mean, um, if we try to epistemologically classify anti-Muslim views, that are similar to anti-Semitic views, uh, then uh, 
it seems like that uh, people that share these anti-Muslim views that somehow share beliefs of uh, people who are anti-Semites. So, um, so in that way, I would say that, um, uh, that, that on a level of beliefs or opinions, at least, uh, there is a kind of fascism going on. So uh, if there are, I mean, if, if there is such a amount of similarity between the two languages, in, if they are almost identical, uh, and if you agree that anti-Semitism is an element of fascism, that anti-Islamism is also a form of such fascism or at least racism. So can we count similarities between anti-Semitism and anti-Islamism as a proof that fascism of some kind exists or can we call this doxastic fascism? So that would mean that, that people basically share some opinions, some views about uh, historical fascism. I mean, they wouldn't, of course, uh, act in such a way that they, they, they wouldn't have political pro programs. Uh, they wouldn't be members of some political parties, but in a way, I mean, uh, they still believe in some fascist ideas. So, I mean, is there any possibility for uh, for something like doxastic fascism to define uh, fascism uh, and its structure in such a way that that would be one of the questions that I will try to deal with in, in the future. Okay, that's all. I will stop here. Thanks for your attention.